This video is an illustration process video and also my second attempt in trying to draw in a similar style to the artist Okipote. My first attempt, although it had similar techniques to the artist, was too pastel and low contrast. So this attempt will be heavily focused on high contrast colouring that many of his illustrations often have. The process will be broken down into chapters so you can just skip to the parts that interest you. I started by sketching a thumbnail on paper, then refining that in Photoshop. I used a rule of third grid for the composition along with a Fibonacci sequence grid. This area will be my main focus, so there will be more details around here and less details as you move away from the eye. While the eyes have the most details, the ponytails will be pretty much flat colors. Along with photographic references, I used this website to create a quick 3D model of the pose to use as a guide for the head, shoulders, and fingers. After the sketch was done, I drew over it to create the line art. For the base color, I started by picking really desaturated colors, then adjusted them as I go. In Photoshop, you can adjust the hue and saturation really quickly by pressing Ctrl and U. This is something that I've used all throughout the illustration. Since the light is hitting the character from the other side, the side that we see will be in shadows. So I use this color for the shadows and erase out to show the lighter base color underneath. I then added another layer, this time for the shadows that are casted by the hair and the skin. I also added red glows to the cheeks, fingers, and other parts of the body. For hair shadows, the artist actually mentioned painting without multiply mode in his book. But since there's more than one color in this character's hair, I decided to use multiply mode. Many of his illustrations have one color for the hairs, so I'm guessing that painting in normal mode might have given him more control over the colors compared to multiply mode. So if your illustration have only one color for the hair, perhaps it's better to paint in normal mode rather than multiply. I then added rim highlights to the edges of the hair. I also added another multiply layer on top of the previous one. This second shadow was done to hopefully add more depth to the image and to make it less flat looking. For the eyes, I'm not gonna lie, I just drew in the exact same way as this image. The layers for the eyes are base color, shadow, reflection of skin and light, bright sparkles using overlay blending mode, and white highlights using screen blending mode. Since the eye is the main focus, I wanted this part to be very detailed and to be the highlight of the image. Since I wanted the character to show oops, emotions, I decided to add sweat drops to show signs of nervousness. The sweat drops can be separated into three layers. The outline, highlights, and shadows. The shadow is the same color as the shadow on the skin layer. And similar to how anime characters sweat when they're nervous, they also sometimes have symbol which appears around their head to show that they are surprised. So I added one to the illustration to help tell a clearer story. For adjustments, I added atmospheric glow around the hair by painting this blue color in screen blending mode. In my case, I wanted more contrast in the image, so I adjusted the contrast and saturation using curve, levels, and hue and saturation adjustment layers. Finally, I added blurs around the edges using Gaussian blur. And as last finishing touch, I added noise texture to the whole image. Overall, I'm really happy with how the colors turned out since I was the main focus of the illustration. Every element and every decision that I made, from composition to line art to coloring, was done in order to replicate a similar outcome to Okipote's illustration. So this image is essentially just a sheep replication of his work. But I'm happy with how much I've learned from this attempt, and I hope that you learned something from this video as well.